I'm glad. Great. I'm glad I remembered that. Okay, um, back to the agenda, please. Um, so really, it's it's simple today. Go, get through the work session for the community event. Make sure we have all the, the I's dotted, the T's crossed. Everyone knows where we're where they're going. We had, did have a really wonderful and robust discussion with our speakers this afternoon. So we'd like to relay what a little bit more about who they are and and what they plan to cover. Um, and then if we have time, we keep kicking this ball down the road, but we do have these upcoming listening and learning sessions um, that we'll be launching in the fall. Now, we're not going to wait too long. I, I would say no more than a month. We'd like to be able to tell the public that you know we're watch, launching those uh, first of September if we can. Um, so we'll do what we normally do. We'll do a quick round robin if anybody has anything relevant. We'll, we'll roll through the community forum and hopefully some listening and learning. We'll take public comment and we'll be out of here no later than five. Um, any questions about what we're tasked with today? Okay, um, let's do a quick round robin. Let's start with, I'll just call you on my screen. Brian Fultz, any news from you? Uh, two, two things, um, you know, one, if, if you live in town and you saw the, the tent camping going on on uh, 89A uh, over the last few days. Uh, I just wanna give a shout out to city staff because multiple departments coordinated very well with state ADOT to find out the legal means for getting those people moved along and off the uh, state highway right of way, doing it legally, and with you know do, doing it right doing it with some degree of empathy uh and hopefully now we're positioned should that uh situation arise again so kudos to city staff uh, for doing that and the other is just talking with another member of the group um, and we'll probably get into it into the second uh agenda topic for today about those listening sessions but just you know this city is so flush with cash and one of the things we hear all the time is what, what's the city doing for residents and it just seems like we really need to make sure that during these listening sessions that people do in fact have an opportunity to say you know this is what would make the city better and yeah. not not think that they're constrained within you know, just the particular programmatic element for which they've shown up that day uh, on Zoom, right? Or, you know, not to assume that it can't cost some money, right? And not that we want to just spend money willy-nilly, but we are blessed that we can do that. So, you know, again, just part of that listening process. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Anne? Nothing. Okay. John? The only thing I have is I've been trying to promote the meeting. I think it's getting some good um, press. Um, in in two subdivisions where we have property, Sky Mountain and um, Copper Cliffs, I reached out both homeowners groups. But the, the emails I got back um, generally want to know a lot more about the process, how they'll be heard, and will they be listened to. Um, and I, you know, and I don't think this has surprised anyone. There's just some pent up frustration, uh, some degree of anger um, as to, you know, what's really going on in the city. And, um, you know, I think some of that's going to come out. I wouldn't be surprised at our meeting. So that's all I have. Thank you. Um, Rich, Richard, Rick. It's, like, it's a funny when I see your names. I'm like, Car is, Anne, is your name Carol? Yeah, my first name is Carol. Okay. I'm just going to call you what it says on your square. Richard Henderson, you're next. <laughs> oh, I think you said nothing, but you were on mute. I thought I had unmuted in preparation for my moment, but nothing to report. Okay, I'm not going to call you Gary because your name is Mary. So Mary, do you have anything? You're on mute, but you shook your head. Are we good? Um, the only thing I would say uh, following John's thing uh, statement is um, I did just get something 
uh, online today about the art center and the conflicting event that is planned there. But um, I guess if people really wanted to, they could go to the art center for an hour and then go to the uh, community plan meeting um, from five to seven. And, and the only other thing I, I think um, last time I brought up about how nice it would be to have some music as people entered. And I think that that is not a priority at this point. And if that's the case, that's fine. I understand. Thanks, Mary. Tony? All good on my end. I'll turn my camera back on when I'm done stuffing my face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ernie. Hi, Ernie. Hi. How are you feeling? How's that knee? Well, I'll be doing okay. Good. Any uh, updates from you? Um, hmm. No, let's just get on <laughs> with the meeting. <laughs> I had a hard time uh, finding the, the link. So I'm sorry, I'm a little late. No problem. Okay. Uh, Mike, Mike. Uh, nothing to add. Okay. Anybody know where Marcy is or if she's coming or not? I didn't hear from her. And Liliana, I think they're the only other two missing, correct? Linda. No one... How about Linda? And Linda. And Linda. Quite a few missing today. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, how about Keegan? Any updates from you, Andy? You want to talk about the live stream and just any other relevant updates? Um, sure. Outreach? Sure. So we posted the video is live on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. It has been sent to uh, very various outlets to try to get more exposure. So thank you for all your help on that, everybody. Right now, the there's also a Facebook event that's being coordinated for this event. And right now we are putting some funding behind it to reach more Sedona residents. And so far that's going pretty well. We're reaching about a thousand people a day, which means that eyes are being set on the event. Uh, that doesn't mean they're doing anything. It just means that they're seeing it and you know maybe they'll see it three more times and say yes and come. So we're holding, we're doing event promotion uh, paid through that outlet until the 7th. So there is an event on a, a Sedona Art Center event at the exact same time. Um, so we'll just hope that a little bit of uh, ad placement this way will entice more people to come our way. Um, oh, we're going to be streaming after a lot of people on Facebook have asked. We decided that we will be streaming the auditorium portion live on Facebook. And I've just created a post to talk about that so people can still see it and they won't be involved they won't be able to interact much after the keynotes have spoken. So we're going to go do a walk around after the keynotes, but it'll pretty much end there because conversations and chit chat will be going everywhere. Yes, we will definitely be pushing the invite and the video a lot more in the next couple of days. Well, week. And uh, we got food figured out. So that'll be cool. I think that's about it from my standpoint. Great. Thanks, Keegan. Yeah, we will do a walk around. Um, maybe I, I don't know when, if, and if the sound is okay, just to kind of show everyone the interactive stations and the kinds of questions and the kinds of feedback that we are eliciting and also letting them know this kind of gets back to your uh, comment, John, that this isn't the, the last time that we're really going to be diving into these topics. We really want their feedback on this. And a big part of this event is going to be the debrief of the event because we're really gonna rely on all of you to help us figure out, you know, did we nail it with the topics on the listening learning and learning sessions or do we need to head off in some different directions? So we will be gathering some of that feedback as well. Um, did I get everyone? I feel like I might've. All right. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is to walk through our very detailed facilitation agenda um, because it lines out kind of how the entire evening is going to go. Um, if you have questions, 
let us know. You each will be given one of these when you arrive and we'll also provide it um, electronic to, electronically to you as well, but you will have a physical paper or copy when you arrive um, at the event. Very important question, except not everyone's here. Can anyone um, not make it to this event? Because we currently have like ideas of where we would like to put you. Of course, you guys can figure out if that's where you want to be and elbow if you want to be somewhere else. But is anyone on this screen not able to make the event on the 7th? Okay. And then apologies to Josh, because I totally skipped over you in terms of the updates. So we're going to do a go back. Um, Josh, go ahead. I don't really have much to add. I did walk over to the library and give them some of our uh, postcards. So, and then tomorrow, Andy, I guess everyone might not even know this, but I'm gonna go to SPAC at 1.30 to do a little walk around the campus and take pictures and just to prepare for setup, so. He's gonna be counting outlets and looking at windows and all the last minute nuances you need to know when you hold an event. Um, okay, fantastic. Carrie, do you wanna go ahead and we can kind of just take turns with this agenda. Do you want to start when you get tired? You can say, sure. okay, you're on. <laughs> Great. Sure. So like Andy said, this is something that the, um, the public will not be seeing. This is something that is for those of us who are kind of quote unquote behind the scenes, figuring out all the details here. So um, <clears throat> likewise, those folks from the city who will be attending and helping um, that includes almost every someone from almost every um, department. So someone from economic development, from sustainability, um, because we're going to need those folks to be kind of the the city level experts to field questions. They will also have one of these. So just to give you guys all um, a heads up. Um, also, I can't see everyone when I'm sharing screens. So if you have a question, please use your raise your hand function, and Jessica and Andy oh, will help. Yeah, yeah. We'll look out for you. So um, can everybody see this? Is it big enough? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Great. Um, OK, so at 3 o'clock, um, the SDR team and the city of Sedona team will be arriving. That is when our we have it reserved for from 3 PM till 8 PM. So we will be arriving at 3 o'clock. We will we'll open up the facility. We'll do a quick walkthrough, thankfully, Josh will have some feedback for us on how many outlets there are, how many trash cans there are, what's working, is there anything that's not working? So we'll do that um, right at three. From three to four, um, that's when we will be setting up the tables. Um, yes, Andy, very good point. Um, work group, you guys are welcome to come and help us and schlep tables and put up poster boards and set out markers and sign in sheets, all the things. Um, so uh, do we want to take a pause real quick and see if Linda has any updates for the group? Yes, let's do that. Linda, we, we did our quick round robin working group updates. Would you like to add anything? Or not add anything since you didn't hear. Would you like to contribute anything? <laughs> Oh, and it's frozen on my iPad. I think we move on. Linda's having some okay. technical if difficulties. You have any, okay. If you have any great updates, Linda, feel free to put them in the chat since we're unable to hear you right now. Um, so yes, to Andy's points, you guys are all welcome to come between three and four if you would like to, recognizing that we're asking you to be there at four o'clock because that's when we will go through the run through of every single station. So um, that being said, so at three o'clock until four, we will be putting out all the parking signs. Um, we will be um, getting the table set up the way we want with the instructions for all the public um, and all the poster boards, visuals, all the interactive stations will be set up at this time. Um, and whatever food we have at that time, bubbly waters, all that stuff, we will get into the refrigerators should we have them at that time, or if they are arriving later, we'll do that later. So that's just kind of that three to four bulk of time. We're gonna do the auditorium prep. We'll make sure that there's chairs on stage, there's a microphone that will check the, um, the audio visual, make sure that everything's working. Um, 
and then make sure that that's set up for the um, Facebook live stream is in the right location and it, it, we aren't going to be videoing the back of people's heads. So that's the three to four block. At four o'clock, you all arrive. Um, the city has um, will be providing yellow lanyard name tags for every helper. You all are considered helpers. So um, you will get those name tags. You will get acquainted with the venue if you haven't been there um, before. So that's a quick right at four o'clock. Um, yes, Andy, we have a contact with Jeremy Ferguson. He has done a lot of the tech work at the SPAC before and um, is willing to do the tech support for this time. He'll be arriving at 4.30 and giving us kind of the actual nitty gritty of the AV um, as far as the slides for the speakers, et cetera. All right, any questions from the three to four time frame? <clears throat> Okay. Uh, so 405, this is going to be the kind of real key part. This is when we're running through every, like we're going to pretend that we're the participants coming in the doors. Is the sign up table ready? Who's going to be there? That's the registration table. We currently have from our team, Jessica Archibald from the city. We have Keegan and Owen. And then from the work group, we have Tony. Anne and Ernie at the registration tables. Ernie, we put you there for two reasons. One, your friendly face, and two, also your knee. Is that the place you'd be most comfortable? That's what we were thinking, is you could be seated at a registration table. Is that good for you? That's or is it fine. easier for you to? Okay. No, that's Great. fine. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, then we'll have the walkthrough to station one. That is, what do you love about Sedona and what do you envision for future Sedona? At that station, it's about the QR code and just ju and don't, don't panic too much, y'all. We have a write-up for each station. So we're just going over the facilitation agenda right now. Each station will have a write-up with your talking points. What is the goal of the station? What is What are the steps of how to get there? Um, so don't worry, we have one of those for each station. We're just going through the overview right now. So station one, um, what do you love and what do you envision about Satona in 10 years? We have Linda and Monica um, set up for that station. We did hear from Monica that she would like to be at that station. So we're, we're feeling pretty good about that. Hopefully Linda can give us a thumbs up that she's willing to be at that station. Thumbs up. Great, thank you, Linda. Um, this is also the time when you all, because you all are members of the public as well, will have an opportunity to complete these stations. So that helps a lot in that we're getting your feedback, but also so when members of the public come in, they're seeing that there's already some things of what do you envision for Sedona in 10 years that's populated by you all. So people are more likely to write sticky notes if they see that there's some already up there. So that's to this point down here, the working group will do all of these exercises um, because you are members of the community as well. Right, so station two um, is the city run station. That is, what is the community plan? What is a community plan update? Um, Josh and Cynthia will be running this station. They have some great visuals. They will have a big, um, you know, kind of commute like community engagement process diagram, like an infographic of where we are, all the different ways that people from the community can engage throughout this process. So again, trying to reiterate that, like you're, um, like you mentioned, John, people not sure how long and in what ways they can um, provide input and engage. So hopefully we can get that from there. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything else there, Josh. If not, I'm happy to move along. Good. Okay. Um, station three is focusing on solutions. This is where we have um, kind of a list of pre-populated buckets. So lumped challenges in um, five or six different categories. And people will be populating what are those solutions? What are, what are some community 
um, you know, designed solutions, ideas from the community members on how to address these challenges. For that one, we have Mike Taylor, Mercy Taylor, and Brian. Um, again, we will have instructions for you at that one as well. So Mike and Brian, you guys are here. Is, did Mercy log in and I missed it? I'm just gonna continue being the little peanut gallery over here until you tell me to stop. Okay, Carrie. Oh, that's fine. I'm just I have a hard time <laughs> I have a hard time tracking the chat while I'm sharing. Don't screen, don't so. don't. It's just it's all you know. I know, but I can't tell help. sometimes people have questions for the speakers. Anyway, um, don't you worry. <laughs> okay, I won't. I'll stop worrying. Um so that will be the focusing on solutions station. Station four is um the future opportunities. Um, station. This will be a map of Sedona city limits, um, probably with some on the outside, since we know on the outside is a lot of forest service. And people will be placing opportunities via a sticky note on that map. We are going to be, again, in the instructions, trying to be general about these opportunities, not I want the crappy sidewalk in front of my house fixed, <laughs> not those kinds of opportunities, but there's an opportunity for more gathering spaces yeah. in the future in this neighborhood, for example. So um, at that one, we have John Sather and Mary Garland. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we are hoping to have, and Cynthia had reached out to Alicia with the sustainability department, but um, Cynthia is also on vacation, and so we will not be bothering her until she returns. Um, we'll be following up with Alicia to see if sustainability department would like to have a table. We're happy to provide one. Um, we also like to have a kids table that usually includes a bunch of big flip chart paper, some sticky notes and markers so that kids can, and some maybe sticky notes with some questions um, or if they just want to draw. So having a place for them to interact and to busy themselves um, is always a nice option. So we'll be running through all of those. Andy, myself, Rick, and Liliana are will be roving. And this is when people have specific questions and they need to, to direct them to a person. Um, if you guys have questions or people at your stations have questions and you're not sure, you can ask us. We will be helping people move out of the entryway into the different stations. We'll be making sure that the refreshments are still stocked, all of those kinds of things. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just insert there that they're all really important roles, of course. But for those that are roving, Rick, um, it's really just making sure people if you, you're just reading the room look for people that aren't doing something, engage with them. If John raises his hand and has a question, you know, so it'll be important for us to show you, like, if there's a question about short-term housing, here's the person you can direct someone to or things like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we have a list of all the helpers and all of the helpers will be there at four o'clock. So we will make sure that the person who is in charge of the housing department from the city can raise her hand and say, if you have people who have specific questions about X, Y, and Z regarding housing, I am your person or other departments as well. Is there a question in the chat? Sure. And ask what will we do with the information from the registration? From the registration? Yeah, what information are we collecting and what will we do with it? Sure. So from registration, we are collecting names and emails, as well as they'll be checking boxes of what they have interest in um, for listening and learning sessions. So we will make sure that these people, just like the hundred and some people who've, who've signed up via the website, are given updates on the results of this meeting, on future ways and um, opportunities to engage, um those kinds of things so that's primarily just from the registration table we are getting that information from them again we will have in your instruction packet those answers to those questions because right. inevitably someone will be like i don't want to put my email down because i don't know how you're going to use it we will have answers for you on what um what we intend and what the city intends to do with all of the information that's gathered from this event go ahead andy 
The other thing that will be included, and again, this is on the instructions and for you, um, which we probably won't walk through every single one of those today, but we could do a little sample of what those instructions at the table look like. Um, on the back of the agenda will be a couple of key questions. Um, we haven't decided those key, key questions. We were really hoping you all could help us with that today, right? So the agenda is a five by seven um, card and on the back is a couple way, more ways to gather information. And so when you hand them their agenda and there will, you can direct them to the back of it to be you know, thinking about some things, answering the questions and then returning those to the box, which will be at the registration table before they go. Okay, I just worry that people will stack up at the registration table if they have too much to fill out, but we have five people, so that should work. It's five people and we have two, two tables, which will be offset so that we're not stacking people up so that we've got you know two places. This isn't our first rodeo. <laughs> we'll try to keep people moving. And if not, Rick will, Rick will move them along, right, Rick? We also, yes, to Andy's point, we've done this many, many times. We also will probably have a, a, an additional table in the wings. Um, if we recognize that there are just massive amounts of people at the registration, we can set up another registration table really easily, whether that's right outside the front doors and people can have multiple locations to do their registration. Um, there's not a bunch of information you'll be giving them. Um, so that's nice to, so that people can move through quickly. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that run through because we will have instructions, we will have the table set up, we'll have the stations ready. The run through, assuming we are ready right on time, will take about a half an hour, right? So to get, to get you all familiar with where they are, um, to look at the table, to kind of review your per personally, your station and what your what it looks like. So it's not the first time you're seeing it when people show up. Um, okay, moving on. 4.30, 4.35, um, refreshments unload. Um, that's kind of an, uh, an internal thing, but we want to get you guys privy to all those details. It's also when Jeremy shows up to do the tech support. So um, you know, probably a city staff and an SDR person will be working with Jeremy. Other people will be helping. Um, actually, I will. I'm going to be joining Jeremy as the um, resident SDR tech person. Um, so then because we know whenever there's a public event, there will be people who will be early. That's just what always happens. So we'll be, we'll have the, those registration tables ready at 445, recognizing that we've advertised that the event starts at five. People want to account for traffic. They want to account for parking. They want to be the first ones in the door. We get that. Um, <clears throat> then um, the event officially starts at five o'clock. So um, at this 545, that's people who are working the registration table. We'll get there. Um, get all set up. Everybody else will kind of filter to their stations and get ready. Um, and five o'clock, essentially round one of interactive stations, remembering that we have them again after the um, speakers. That is when um, the we really do the kickoff. Um, and this is where we're helping all of us or helping move those participants from station to station. All of you will have that um, that job as well. Once you see that people have completed the station you're working at, make sure to encourage them to provide input at an additional station. Um, one thing that we didn't put on here, I don't think, is that 4.30, the, key, the keynote speakers or the program speakers will be arriving um, so that they will be familiar with what the event looks like, what the space looks like. They can meet all of you as well. Um, and uh, and we can make sure that they're there earlier than later, also so that they can kind of mingle and see who from the public is there so they can make any final tweaks to what they would like to say. I'm gonna, I feel like I need a drink of water. So Andy, you wanna take over? You're on mute. Andy, you're on mute. Happy to take over, just creating the 430 st slot. So if you could finish that, that'd be great. And then can you stop sharing so I can open mine and move it around? Okay, here we go. Okay, let me know if you can't see that. All right, so 430, 
folks arrive, um, like Carrie said, be ready to roll at 4.45. Um, and then our event officially starts at five. Uh, if you remember, this is what we're calling here interactive stations round one. We have two interactive stations, one in advance of the programming and one after the programming. Um, so during that time from five to 5.30, you will be helping your participants, your community members. You will have already done it yourself. You have specific instructions on how to do that. Um, uh, Carrie and I will be finding the speakers to continue reviewing timing. There's all kinds of things we need to do. Uh, at 5.20, I have a really nice bell. It was my grandmother's bell. <laughs> I'm gonna ring that bell. Um, this is also something, Anne, that will be in the instructions and others at the registration table. You can let folks know that there'll be, some, there'll be two bells. The first one is it's gonna start in 10 minutes. The second one is get in the auditorium. So I'll ring the bell at 5.25. Start wrapping up conversations if you can with your folks at your stations. 5.25, I'm gonna ring it again, and then we're gonna actively move people into the auditorium. Uh, at 5.30 is when the speakers start. So um, we kind of need to take a look and see where it makes sense for everyone to sit. If it's a big, giant, empty stage with three people sitting awkwardly in the middle, we're not gonna do that. We'll just have them sit in the front row of the auditorium. So some patience while we figure that out, uh, what makes the most sense. Um, as we uh, talked about before, the agenda is a quick, we'll call everybody to, to action. Here we go. Uh, we'll pass it to Mayor Moriarty. She'll have um, that welcome and the mayor's comments will be no more than seven minutes. She's just gonna have some talking points that she's gonna welcome everyone with. She'll turn it back to us where we go over the program overview, what, what we're doing for the evening, some gentle uh, working agreements, um, you know, what this, who the speakers are, things like that. Um, then we'll turn it to the city staff and they're gonna do a short plan update. What is it? What is it not? What are some things that it has accomplished in the last 10 years? Cynthia is gonna give that. And then Cynthia will turn it towards the speakers. Um, the first speaker is John O'Brien, former planner. And when we finish this section, Carrie, if I can turn it back to you to go over the outline of the keynote speakers, that would be great. Uh, speaking for 15 to 18 minutes. After him will be Tom Binnings, also 15 to 18 minutes. And then Francis Reamer. Reimer? I think it's Reamer. We need to make sure which it is. Uh, Ernie, go ahead. I see your hand. Mute, Ernie. You're on mute, Ernie. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. Frankie, uh, she likes to go by the name Frankie. Uh, she's my next door neighbor. <laughs> Actually, it's strange, but uh, it's Frankie Reamer. Reamer. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We, we, according to her, she is Francis in professional realms and Frankie in, in other realms. So oh, we are continuing okay. to call well, her fine, Francis. Fine. We're going to see how okay. the relationship goes. Hopefully, yeah, we'll be everybody, by the end everybody of the in the neighborhood knows her as Frankie. That's okay. Yeah. So those speakers will run from 5.30 to 6.40. Um, and then we will not be doing moderated questions for the speakers, but instead the speakers will be leaving and going out to a table. We will have talked about this in our opening about how the evening will go and they can go out and have conversations with them. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Andy, it did she, her audio freeze for others? Yeah, and video too. Knowledge, all the hard work. Oh, Go ahead. Sure. Somebody have a question. You were uh, you froze for a minute for all of us, but you're back. Keep going. Oh, okay, great. Let me check and see which internet we decided to go on today. Um, yeah, I think that's enough on that one. So, given internet issues just then, I'm nervous, and I'm going to pack it back, pass it back to Carrie for the keynote speaker discussion we had today. Sure. <clears throat> but background um, while she sets that up. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So um, we were lucky enough to have um, a Zoom meeting with John and Tim and Tim, Tom, Tim, Tom. Oh, sorry. Um, too many things happening in my brain right now. John and Tom and Francis, who may go by Frankie, but at this point we are addressing her as Francis. Um, we had a lovely conversation with them. They all worked really well on the phone talking about what perspectives they were going to address. 
Um, we have started with John as the really key local perspective, recognizing he was a former community development director for the city of Sedona and then working globally. Tom Binnings, um, he is the chair elect of VV Rio. He's on, he's a board member of the Sedona Library. He also has a really um, international and national level of, um, of uh, kind of lens for, um, for economics. So he will be providing that context. And then Francis will be rounding us out with kind of, um, she's done a lot of work internationally. She has done a lot of work with host communities and how they address tourism. Um, and what residents can best do to be stewards, recognizing tourism is part of life, but how they can take ownership um, for their communities and be stewards for those communities. So we're really um, think that that's a great, a good flow um, for the evening. Um, they all um, have ties to um, Sedona and the Verde Valley. So that's really nice to know that they all are well versed in um, in the issues and the locales in the environment um, and as well as the as community members. <clears throat> so we think that that will bring um, a really good feel to the evening. Um, they're going to set hopefully throughout the entirety of of the talk. Um, we um, we're hoping that they will be both positive. Um, future looking, recognizing challenges, and really hopefully motivating community members to continue participating um, to kind of be part of the solution. <clears throat> it's nice, just a reflection that, that I had. Um, they really want to work well together, so much so that they're organizing um, probably their own additional conversation just with the three of them. Um, we have organized them again from local to global. Uh, Francis, Frankie will end. Um, they all have great energy, but I think it's nice to end with Frankie. She has really, really great energy. Um, yeah, so we we do have an out sort of an outline of, of notes that we took today, um, which we I think we could clean up and share with you all again um, on kind of the gamut. They haven't written, uh, John has, but the others are still thinking and they wanted to talk to each other today in terms of making they, making sure they weren't going to duplicate any sort of topics. And they, any all specific three, they all three will have some visual behind them. John um, really just wants a map um, as his background visual. Tom has indicated he will have three to five slides to kind of move through his portion. And, um, and Frances has indicated she will provide some slides as well. Um, yeah, each, each speaker has 15 to 18 minutes to speak, um, and we're going to try real hard to keep them to that time slot so that when we end, people still have time to go back and do those stations that maybe they didn't get to before the speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are very um, uh, humble about making sure that they meet the audience's needs. John even practiced a couple jokes on us so that we could let him know if those were appropriate or not appropriate. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, but um, same as with all of this information, the facilitator agenda, the station instructions, we will have a note, uh, a cleaned up um, outline of what the speakers will be kind of addressing. We will make that all available to you all ahead of this event. So you guys can do a little bit of deep dive reading if you'd like, or if you want to get there and do it when you get there, that's fine. But we know that um, everybody wants to be prepared in different ways. So we'll make sure and get that to you guys ahead of time um, so you can look at it if you'd like. Any questions about keynote speakers? Okay. We do plan to draft short bios that will be included on the agenda as well. Um, and Jessica, in the notes, let's make sure that we link um, their their websites, you know, NAU, her website from NAU, Tom's information, um, so folks who are reading the notes can, can see that. All right. Thanks for hanging with us. This is slow and methodical, but we want to make sure everything's really clear. Go ahead, Brian. So my question is, do you have a good sense of what these three people are going to talk about? that is informative and motivating, that's gonna get people to want to participate in this process for the weeks and months ahead. Because right now it just still seems like we're in 
trust me mode that they're going to deliver something useful and that people are not going to walk away going, yeah, I just had three people talk at me for an hour and I got nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Brian, that's a hard question to answer. And in a perfect world, we've had it would have had enough time to have multiple interviews of the people that we would have had speak. Um, so I totally understand. Um, I, I think we're hesitant to, I mean, we could share the notes we took today and they're just not cleaned up, right? I mean, it took, we didn't have much time. It was about a month ago that we started really putting some of this together. And we recognized that at the time. And then there was some respectful disagreement on whether we should try to be getting people from, you know, uh, strong, strong towns or things like that. So, um, yes, I understand your thoughts and your concerns. If I guess at this point, um, if my, and I know Carrie share this, shares this as well, Josh, your perspective, Keegan was on the call as well. Love to hear from you. I think they're going to do fantastic. Um, I think they understand the task at head. We have, we have not been able to say to them enough times, make sure this is engaging make sure that this um, includes why people need to stay involved. Please include specifics on how other towns have dealt with this. Please, I mean, there's so many juicy nuggets that they have brought up and it was really beautiful today to hear them speaking about, well, I'll, I'll, if you're gonna cover that, I'm gonna do this. And so we'll, we'll just get to you really soon, um, like kind of the bulleted items that they were planning on talking about. I hope that makes you a little happier, Brian. I understand where you're coming from. It's not my happiness that I'm concerned of. <laughs> well, I care about that. Go ahead, Linda. So um, I'm wondering, is what, you, you kind of touched on it, Andy. Will one of them give an example of how another community has used the community plan to make some really dynamic change so that because if I'm listening, I mean, one, I am concerned about listening fatigue, as we brought up before. And, and like Brian was sort of alluding to, I mean, this can, we don't want it to be one long sermon with a little bit of, you know, humor and stories thrown in, which I know you're aware of. But my, I want to be able to envision something. When I go to a good conference, they're able to take my concrete thinking, you know, with my town and be able to connect me to another community similar to mine so I can start to imagine what can happen here. And that's very motivating. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I would, and I- John has I a question wanted, as well. Yeah, so just so you guys know, I'm the one who's being cagey about the notes because I took the notes and I don't wanna share them when I'm at share screen with you right now because they're not clean. So that's my, we have all the things that they, indicated they wanted to talk about. And to your point, Linda, absolutely. Both Tom and Francis have really great examples of how to um, how this has worked in other places, what those places have done with their community plan, um, especially to Tom's point. And then, but to Francis's point, how other communities that are dealing with very similar issues to Sedona are harnessing those challenges to really make impactful change. So I would right. say, that that right. those from those two john o'brien gives a robust history right he has got he has been involved in sedona for a very long time so he's the one that people can connect with and identify with whereas the other two are really kind of moving that out right um to how other places have addressed very similar challenges how they have used community input and participation to leverage change from the community standpoint, recognizing city councils and mayors and the intricacies and complexities of city government. So yes, the, that's the long answer. The short answer is yes, Linda. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Go, John, ahead. go ahead, John. Two things, um, we're on the road, so I think we should support your whole night. I think it's well organized and um, you know, I've been through many of these. I just think um, you know, it will, um, you know, I'm, I'm certain enough people will show up and it will be a great event. Um, the, the, the other thing, and if somebody could get to O'Brien, let's not cut Sedona short. Sedona did some of the most powerful things in its community plan that anyone has done in at least Arizona. In its first community plan, it stopped all forest service trades. We have thousands of acres of untouched open space around us. 
Scottsdale paid $1.5 billion for its open space in the McDowell Mountains. So just think if we were saddled with that kind of bonding, five bond votes um, did that. The other thing is early on, we were extremely mistreated by Yavapai County and Coconino County. We produced out of the first community plan the new um, community development code that was very forward thinking um, um, and stopped the kind of insanity that you see going on in Yavapai County over in Dewey and these areas where they massacred the hillsides and just destroy the land. So I would like us to, we can look elsewhere, but let's let especially the new people know that we are a smart community. We got our act together, incorporated, produced a great community plan the first time out of the box. And, you know, we are now years later enjoying that. So that, that's you know, what's the next big thing we can do? Yeah. The other thing exactly. I would add, and I, yeah, very good points. Thank you, John. Um, and, you know, if if uh, we just had this call at noon, so we've been slammed, which is why they're still disorganized. But I would, if Carrie, if I can spend enough time talking here, she could maybe find a couple other nuggets. But the thing that we made sure that they understand too, is that this is, and they, we didn't even really have to tell them this, they understand this. This is really a call to action to the community. And it doesn't, um, discount the power of government because it's it's there in what other whatever form it works or doesn't work um but they do talk about how it works and it doesn't work and so that it's really the citizens and the community that make it work and so they they focus tom focuses on on implementation as well he doesn't just stop at planning he talks about how important it is to continue collaborating and to continue to make change so that was something we wanted to make sure that they continued to talk about was not just thanks for coming for this year, but um, create groups, stay involved and, and move forward together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So to your point, John, um, I just want to read what I wrote down that John um, said. He's like, he really wants to address what are people benefiting from now that are the results of prior planning efforts. So really right. highlighting that from that personal perspective, from his point of view, because he was involved at the very beginning and really leading off with this. This is why community planning is important. Look at what we have now because of prior planning, right? Um, yeah, to your point, Andy, really um, Tom wanting to talk about, um, you know, the implementation. Also, he really, he, I think he wants, um, and this is based on what I wrote, but he, he's like, he's, recognizing the difference between current momentum and where change comes from. So current momentum now is that there's lots of problems, there's lots of challenges, people are focusing on challenges, challenges, but to make change, people have to create a different momentum. And that can be difficult because it isn't harnessing existing momentum. It's change comes and it's, it can feel difficult and it can feel uncomfortable because they have to create a new momentum. And then really also emphasizing, like Andy mentioned, the, the the power of the plan is in implementation and what that could look like. Um, and then as far as what Frankie or Francis would like um, to talk about is, um, um, let me see, talking about- Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> yeah. um, so focus, she, she is a resident, so focusing on um, what makes Sedona unique, um, and its history and its economics, how does that fit into the larger context and trends of cities that are similar to Sedona? So to your point, Linda, um, how might cultural studies of tourism help Sedona community members think about their situation, centering host communities in the plan, host residents in the plan and what that could look like, as well as really hoping to help focus people into this stewardship mentality and the stewardship mode. Go ahead, Linda. Go ahead, Linda. I have something also, and I don't know if it's appropriate to bring up here, but it's something that we need to say. And that is that going forward, the state is looking at more bills to impose onto our community. So they impose the vacation rental bill 1350, 
there's another bill that that's that is going to be reintroduced it came into the legislature last year it's called the by rights uh zoning and it is a deadly bill for sedona even though it sounds like it's a real solution i don't want to go into any detail my point is this that as a community we have to be able to come together for the protection like john was just pointing out about land trades this isn't something that can go into the community plan. And I don't know if it's, a, that's why I say, I don't know if it's appropriate to bring up here, but it's something new that we haven't seen in the past community. You know, at the time we were writing the community plans and it's something we have to be aware of. So anyway, I want to bring that up. Absolutely, Linda. And, and I see your finger just one second, Ernie, but just to talk to that one point, um, there was a lot of talk today between the three speakers about the complexity of how these things work. State is setting policy, and that affects cities and towns across the state, and how community plans and city government and city elected officials and city workers and managers can all work within this really complex um, ecosystem of policy and how that funnels into implementation. So I really feel that the three speakers really have a good understanding of that. And um, it was my understanding that, that that would be part of their takeaway as well. As okay, thank you. The community with, okay. yeah. Go ahead, Ernie. <sighs> You're on mute, Ernie. I had several opportunities over the last week to have to under, uh, explain to uh, locals that the working group is not making the decisions regarding what appears in the new community plan. And I hope that we make that clear right up front in our opening remarks. Maybe Sandy covers that or or you all in SDR uh, cover that early uh, because I've had to say this is it's not our plan. Uh, mm -hmm. We are just you know uh, throwing ideas uh, uh, at, out at you, but uh, this will be the community plan, and what you say counts way more than what I say. You know, so right. Okay. And that will, we do intend to have that be up Good. front at the speaking portion um, to let everyone know who the city is, who you all are, who you all are, as well as your role, right? That you guys, yes, so, you're community members as well. You guys get to put sticky notes on there as well, but you also get to help the city synthesize all this information from the community. So we will definitely make sure to highlight your role and what it is and what it is not. Exactly. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other questions for, from folks about the speakers, the content, the the speaking portion, if you will, of the evening? Um, we tried originally to try and cram it into 60 minutes, but with all of the um, with all the pieces that need to be addressed so that things are very clear, um, it looks like it's going to be 70 minutes. Um, and then really wrapping it up at the end um, with SDR saying, we are not going to have a moderated question and answer, but if you have topic specific questions you would like to ask the speakers, they will be available out in the foyer where all the um, stations are happening. Um, please make sure that your questions are about their content, be respectful, et cetera. So um, one thing we didn't mention was that at the beginning, of the speaking portion, we're really going to set some, you know, we don't like to call them ground rules or whatever, but just expectations for the evening, right? That we recognize there's a lot of opinions, there's a lot of passion, but um, but that everyone really, the only way this works is if everybody is really respectful. Um, so we'll make sure and, and, and address that. Hi, Mercy. Okay, so that covers the speaking portion. Um, sorry. sorry for the late start. No problem. No worries, Marcy. Do you, you. Um, do you have any updates that you'd like to provide the working group um, about? No, I think like I sent around the XYZ video. 
So it was um, Mike, Monica, and me. So we're trying to spread the word. We did YouTube, Facebook. I haven't done Instagram yet, but trying to get some, I'm trying to, trying to delegate that. Great. Okay. Um, as so. yeah, as was mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, the more we can do that, and the more you yeah. you all harness that, the better. The more people you get people engaged the way they want to be engaged to come, whether that's from the Facebook page or from Instagram or from an email. Um, but yeah, pushing those videos out and and the invitation out. Thanks, Mercy. Andy, do you want to take it away, or you want me to start sharing again that facilitator agenda? Um, if you, I'm a little, I'm at home. I had a childcare issue this afternoon. So I'm a little nervous about my internet. If you wouldn't mind continuing, that would be great, Carrie. Apologies. No worries. Life, real life happens. <laughs> it does. Um, yeah, let me. Okay. Everybody can see that again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just finished up this section right here in gray, now highlighted in blue. Um, so that will be um, from 5.30 to 6.40. Um, there, we have asked just as one redo, not redo, one backtrack. We have asked um, John specifically to engage the audience as he feels appropriate. So that might just be asking questions to the audience to have people raise their hand just to make sure that it keeps going and moving forward, recognizing that 70 minutes can feel like a lot to sit and listen to. So hopefully with the change of pace, with the speakers only speaking for less than 20 minutes, it'll go pretty quickly. Um, and then we had everybody back out into the general foyer area um, for a second round of the interactive stations. This is where people can do a, Put, provide their input at a station they haven't yet already done. Um, and, and so it's going to be kind of a repeat. You all go back to the same stations with the exception of the registration folk. You guys can feel free to rove around, to um, obviously have um, conversations with community members, help people continue to be engaged um, during this last 20 minute chunk. Um, Technically, the event ends at seven, but we're not turning off lights and closing doors at seven. So um, we have committed to be there until eight. And if people want to stay until 7.15 or 7.30, we're, we're happy from our perspective to stay. Um, and then there's always the cleanup at the end. So um, we are not going to oblige you all to, to stay past seven o'clock. But if you feel so inclined, that's great. Um, yeah. And then that's just, that's kind of the, the rounding out of the facilitator agenda. Um, as you can see, Andy is populating these kind of ground rules. Um, you know, there's, we're still working. This is a working draft. We have these, this isn't the final verbiage, right? But just kind of things that we're remembering to encourage people to consider as they're participating, right? Continue to be community mind, minded, be mindful of your tone come from a position of trying to learn as opposed to trying to speak at, um, you know, be respectful. We are not going to discourage disagreements. That's fine. But so long as they are respectful and really, yeah, I think this last one that, oh, before is that mindful and creative solutions are what the city is looking for, right? We are encouraging the community to provide feedback in a creative future thinking kind of way. Um, so that gets out our facilitator agenda. I know we went through that um, feels like quickly, but you know, it took 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to stop sharing, but does anybody have any big kind of like, oh my gosh, questions about the flow of the evening content, um, et cetera? Yes, John. When in the process do you let those that attend know what comes up next? Is that, I mean, are we ready? When we talked earlier about, gee, we ran out of time and we had to do all this, um, we can't do that again. So we need yeah. to um, really look at this process and schedule closer because I don't think we should be throwing speakers together at the last minute or not 
getting um, the right timing. But if, if, if they're all there and they, they've been ginned up, what's the next thing they do? So who's, who does that and when is it done? So the city, if I crack again, I'm just going to stop talking, Carrie. But the city, we have a new process graphic that Cynthia worked on. Uh, we could probably find that and share that as well. And the city will be not only presenting that verbally, so it has a timeline along the bottom. It shows you know, where we are and where we're headed in terms of listening and learning sessions and the variety of ways they can get involved moving forward. Um, and absolutely in terms of making sure we stay on track with the working group moving forward in terms of you know, thinking more ahead of these things. This, you know, I think, I think it's going to be great, but the reality is that, you know, we were going to do listening and learning sessions, and then you guys had this really great idea to do this in-person session, and then off we went, and it wasn't three months ago, it was a month and a half ago, and so let's be more forward thinking, all of us, so that we don't find ourselves in this position where we're feeling a little rushed. This was definitely put together um, quickly. I think it's coming together really nicely, but Linda, go ahead. I, what I heard John saying, and maybe I'm hearing it wrong, but I thought at the night that we have the kickoff, how are we mm -hmm. going to let them know? Yes. And I'm hoping that it's introduced early on it and then we're gonna give a more detail at the end. So you tell them and tell them again, okay. Yeah, so Josh will present that. And then I would argue, let's get this in the notes, Jessica, that the last thing that we say before we send people off again is we put this up and remind them again when they will be hearing from us. We also should put this, if it's not already, this needs to be put on the webpage. I think it is already on the webpage. Um, but this is a revision of, of the, the process map moving forward. Great. I, I understand that we don't have a lot of um, creative resources available to us, but I'm just curious if there's a way to make this more, I guess, consumer friendly. You know, this still has an air of like, you know, something you'd put in front of us, right? Us kind of geeks working on the community plan, business people, but... I just don't know that your average person knows how to, I don't know. I'm not trying to talk down about anybody at all, but like, this is a flow mm -hmm. chart, I guess. And you know, what is, is this just the right thing? I guess I'm asking for an engaging conversation around what's next. Now I have to suddenly read, there's going to be a lot of older people in the audience. I can barely read all of this Is you know, is someone else going to be able to, I guess, just something to think about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thank you for the feedback, Tony. Um, this is one of many iterations of, of this diagram. Um, I yeah, think, no, it's, got, it's uh, gotten better from the last time you shared it. Absolutely. Right. So, um, so to your point, though, just I think I think having a general one is helpful. But I think this one also really shows that there are many ways that the public can continue to engage. Yeah. So we are here at this community forum. This is just a big yellow square. Then we've, you know, we drill down into the topics that people really want to engage in. So I, I, I agree to an extent, but I think that this really highlights that there are many, many ways that the public can engage. And we recognize there are going to be folks that are not going to see this and not be able to read it when we're sitting down and we get that. This will also be a big infographic at the city station. It's like, what's the plan update? This is where this will be on a four by four. Hopefully, I'm not sorry if I'm speaking out of turn, Josh. This will be a large infographic um, that people can get up close and look at. And that's what we're encouraging, right? We're, in, we're not encouraging people to fly through the stations. Get in there and see which ways you can engage. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, I think that this also provides a little bit more detail so that people can see, wow, I have one, two, three more ways to engage in different ways, topic-based, focus, large community workshops again. So, so that's- And Tony, that's also, Tony, also an invitation. Help us. If you see this in a different way, create it, present it to the working group. If it's like, let's use, if you- Please. Well, I'm not, I'm not a creative person, so you can, you can push that back on me and make it my action item because I provide you with critical feedback. That's fine. I can, I can accept that, but I just, this just feels like a business slide to me. It doesn't feel like something I would show a community where I want to get, you know, further feedback from them. I'm curious who will be presenting this. Is this Cynthia's part of the presentation? Yes. Okay. 
Um, Ernie. Yeah. Do you have feedback? And then I, I saw you take yourself off. And then Marcy, go ahead. Okay, a suggestion along those lines. Why why don't we have uh, several hundred of these printed out as handouts? Uh, I I agree with Tony. Uh, if you look at look at it on a screen and you're trying to read it and understand it, and somebody's talking about it, your mind is being you know buffeted around. Uh, if you can take it home and say, ah, okay, here is the whole darn plan. I get it, it it's a reinforcement. Done. Not only that, Done, that, that was <laughs> suggestion one. Suggestion two, and I'm not sure if I missed this, but are we going to hand out at the registration table agendas with what the time is and perhaps the, the little speaker bios at the at the top and what each one of those stations are going to be uh, you know so that people can really see what as they're checking in what the whole evening is about yeah so what do we do Did I miss that? So, yeah. you missed the agenda part that's okay, okay. yes okay. the agenda will have the time for everything some elicitive questions on the back to be determined and speaker okay. bios i'm okay. now seeing a front and back document which is the process map on one side and the stations at the other okay. if they only want to talk about solution challenges and solutions maybe they spend their entire half an hour there we yeah. do want to encourage them to start with the planning one if possible um okay. just to learn but yes duly noted done thank okay. you ernie that's very helpful great thank you mercy go ahead sorry it's it's been a day you have <laughs> the two best creative people in town lauren brown and keegan moorcroft on the communications team they can make everything look beautiful but they're they're drinking from a fire hose if you need someone to do creative and sorry if i'm gonna anger you based on relationships Rand jenkins from mojo marketing knows how to do the creative he's already on contract with the city let him make this pretty it's not pretty and people need to you need to distill it down to the the least common denominator and tell people what to do sadly where to show up how to show up what to do so you've got your team built in i'm fully confident that keegan and lauren and rand can get it going so i understand what tony's saying just distill it down to the least common denominator you've got this you've got this that's my comment. Thank you. Duly noted. We'll work on it. Yep. We will put it on our to-do list. <laughs> yes. The thing I love about this group, loud and clear, good communicators. Thank yep. you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Carrie, do you want to show them like one example of the table? instructions we're not going to go through all of them but just like the level of detail that's on there i don't know which one you want to pull up but one would be great yeah i can do that i also want to check in and see if people want to take a five minute break um it is almost 4 15. i know that you guys have been sitting for a minute um we can do the we can run through the table instructions or you guys can take five and come back and, and we can start running through kind of the nitty-gritty of what the instructions for each table will look like let's take five Carrie. Okay. Nobody, nobody argues with a five minute break. All right. And if you could put your, um, Zooms on mute, please. If you walk away, that'd be great. Somebody's is still on. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, I know, super short break. Whew. Here we go. John, go ahead. Uh, real quick, um, you, you know, one of the things that in group dynamics that will happen like this, I think people will come and maybe ignore the stations and go right to sit down. Um, just like going to the movie, um, could we have some um, rolling slides or questions or thoughts or maps of Sedona that you're just kind of watching until, um, you know, it's like sub subliminal feedback um, before everybody comes in um, and not just pretty pictures of Sedona. These would be ones that would, um, you know, begin to um, uh, queue up your thinking. And, um, you know, the other thing is, is there some big slide that says plan Sedona is like a, a backdrop slide. Um, I, I'm just thinking back to uh, when um, uh, the state parks had Bruce Babbitt come and interviewed him on stage. There was a big backdrop and a nice uh, image on the back. And um, the stage just had a couple plants on it because there was only him and Carol Kahn talking. So you might just think about that in just pure group dynamics. People don't want to run around to stations, um, but you've got a captured audience there. So I'll stop there. 
I, I love that idea. And I would also add, and maybe Keegan knows the answer to this, like how far away a QR code has to be in order for it to work. Cause you could actually have one of the slides be the QR code with the, that you're gonna do at that station and have the descriptions there, right? And maybe they can answer it while they're sitting. I don't know if they need to be at the station to do that or not, but just a thought. Yeah, and the, I think- the other, the other thing on this, this could be part of our brand for giving public meetings. Um, because if we have the listening, et cetera, um, there may be a little preamble that, you know, we just kind of keep building on churning. There's a little bit of that, then maybe even at the end there's something. So I'll stop. I think that's good, John. And and this is a call to you, Josh. When you go, you know, there's a long hallway, as you know, getting into that place. And we plan to stagger the agenda stations so that we could keep me people moving. But just beyond that, and also maybe you see it while you're standing in line to get your agenda, if people all come up, you know, maybe somewhere in that area. So like just past the agenda station. So when you go there, um, Josh, think about that. Where could we have this scrolling? And just really, I think, John, I think it's great in, in terms of like elicitive questions, right? A beautiful picture with a, an elicitive question and just, just a running narrative of why it matters and the kinds of things we'll be talking about or, you know, that kind of thing. Simple, real simple. And just like you said, subliminal listening sessions, October, be there, pretty picture, whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right, should we so, show one example, Carrie? Um, yeah. So this is for the first station. And just so you know, this is just the written instructions. This is not with the visual layout of what it looks like. We will have all these things paired. We're still in the process of refining. So this is just instructions. This is what Linda and Monica will receive when they are... Um, when you guys show up at four o'clock and we do the run through, let me make this bigger. <clears throat> so this is Sedona present and future. Every station has a goal. Okay. That this is identifying, um, what are, what, what's the difference between now and future Sedona? What do things, what do people currently love? What are their visions for down the road? Um, this is to highlight the good things about the current Sedona and visions for the future Sedona. We will have some really robust, and this will be at every station because we want everybody to be able to talk to community members about how all of this information will be used by the city. We're not collecting information for information's sake, right? We're not having them do these exercises because they're fun. Yes, they're fun. They also are providing important information to city staff. So each station will have a really succinct way that you can tell people. So when they're like, so what's the city going to do with this information? You will be able to speak to that. It'll be who's working at this station. And there will be instructions. So for this one, please scan the QR code. There will be a big QR code stuck on this table. They will be able to scan it. They will be able to write the two things that they love about Sedona. And those results will pop up as the laptop is refreshed at the table. The things that people love over and over again will get bigger and bigger. And they'll be populated with additional words of things that people have said that others haven't. <clears throat> um, hey, quick question there, Carrie. Sure. Um, I, something we should probably include in this. Um, you can't screen poopy things that people might say. So I think we should include in there, um, we might get some serious snark. Hopefully it's so small, no one can see it, but let's let's make sure that we include in there, like, please be respectful. You know, this is being projected. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. We don't want profanity showing on a wall if we can avoid it. So while she, while she um, finishes that, the other part of this is just a really big, beautiful part picture of, of an agave with a pile of sticky notes next to it. And we're encouraging um, 
participants and community members to talk about envisioning Sedona. What, what, here's the difference between what you currently love, but let's make it even better. So kind of walking them through, you know, my Sedona has this and that's great. And I envision that it could have this in the future, or I want my community to have this by doing this. And these will just be placed on the sheet. Um, they'll be pre-populated because you all will have already done this exercise as well. Yeah. Go ahead, Carrie. So each instruction station will also have a materials list of the things that you should find there. There'll be a slew of Sharpies, a slew of sticky notes. So multiple people can be doing this around the table. Um, there'll be the projector ideally to project that word cloud onto the wall. There's lots of wall space in certain parts of the SPAC. So we'll make sure and set that up in a place that makes sense for that. Um, and this is not a large printed landscape photo. This is just a large printed photo. Um, this is the current QR code. If you all want to take out your phones right now and scan that, make sure it works. You can do that. Um, this is one of those things where um, there inevitably will be someone who doesn't want to scan it or it won't work on their phone. So if that's the case, we need to um, provide an opportunity for them to write two things that they love, recognizing these will all be combined in the end. Okay. So we kind of have to work, kind of roll with things as they come up, which I'm sure you guys all, all can do. Works, works, works. Awesome. It, it says enter a word. Do you literally mean they can only put a word? No. Okay. Might want to change um, it. I guess the instructions, they can help with that. Right. Men, so, Menti, is, yeah. Menti is great. It's like almost, it's like poll everywhere. I don't know if we're going to do a word cloud or what, but um, yes. okay. So then just ask for a word or two, just like you have it. I put mine in. Um, Good. We can clear it. <laughs> yeah. You can clear it out. <laughs> but That's, and so, yes, we were, we don't want sentences is what we're getting at. A word cloud doesn't lend itself to people writing just one sentence. A word. So, one word so we'll say one word or two um and and people can you know people are going to write that it's beautiful that it's you know all the things that we anticipate hopefully we'll see some things that are surprises as well so i'm going to stop sharing this and then i'm going to share what we will pair with this for you all um holy cow so many things <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is what this station will look like. Okay, it will say, what do you love about Sedona over here on the left with instructions as well with a QR code. And then over here, please write your vision and place it on the agave. Okay, so we will have this printed out so that it can be take up in it as much of a six foot table as we can. And we're still, bear with us, working out whether or not we can stick things on the wall because the SPAC is particular about what gets placed on the wall and what doesn't. So we're working through all those details. Again, why it's really important that Josh is going there tomorrow to get all those, um, those specifics. So these are the kinds of things that you will anticipate seeing for the instructions for the stations you will be at. Instructions with um, a small visual so that you know what to expect, what people will be seeing when they get there. Jessica, can you put in the notes? Um, it's a little confusing because the instructions for both are under just the first exercise. So let's separate those so it's clear that what you love is a different exercise and what you envision. I just caught that. Okay. Yes, Mike, yes, the Mike. bubble graphic, the word cloud we plan to project on the wall. Um, we could also take a picture of it or leave it on the on the screen, close it down and run it again a second time for those who haven't taken it. Probably not necessary, but you can do that. So yes, we're going to project it on the wall. Ernie. Ernie, go ahead. I have a guess that probably... 50% of people have no idea what a QR code is or don't have a QR code uh, 
reader on their phone to do it. It certainly it, it's it's my wife for one, <laughs> and uh, she's just not that technically uh, into things and astute that way. That'll, so, that'll be my job. Yeah, Rick will collect. You can. It's just it, as good you can to write do it on things. a sticky note. Okay. We can we can manually input them. Yeah. Good. I'll good, watch good, for good. Last Okay. Fine. Oh, okay. And you can you can check their pulse while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to give you guys um, for those of you who aren't sure what a word cloud is. Because you guys all entered a couple of words, I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Um, this will change as as more people populate it, right? So the cool thing with this is that every time I hit refresh, the 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 location of the words change, and as more people say beauty, the word beauty gets bigger. As more people say activities, the word activity gets the font size gets bigger. So that's kind of the idea about behind the word cloud is that people are seeing that, wow, I agree with so many other people that we love the beauty of Sedona, right? That kind of translates into vision statements down the road. So just to give you guys nice. background on that. <clears throat> okay, so- What else, Carrie? What yeah, that's kind of an example of station one mm -hmm. instructions and layout. I'm not going to go through all of them because that feels a little tedious in this moment. Um, but I do really want to offer time for folks to, we have covered a lot of the back end of how to, this event will work. Um, are there questions or concerns or oh my gosh have you guys thought of this because I have and you guys didn't mention it we really want to provide that opportunity as well thanks Tony so um appreciate your patience as we continue to pull this together um we will send these out electronically as well for every good meeting, there's always very last minute changes. That's just the reality, whether you plan it six months in advance or, or a day in advance. So um, we will send it out with enough time for you to review it, but also not now because we're gonna continue to make some changes over the course of the coming days. We have a week still before the event. Linda. This is a small thing, but it's mm -hmm. always nice to engage young people, like really young people whose future is Sedona. They have a key club at the high school and it would be nice if they had a sign that, that four people held and one of them says, welcome. And one of them, just a nice, cool, funky writing, you know, hand, kind of like hand done. And another one says, start here. So as they're walking up, they know where to, they're welcomed. They know how to, where to start. Here's the, regi like, here's the registration table. Another one would say refreshments. And another one says agenda. So they know where, so there's, so they get to see four real young people that are under, you know, 21. And which is, you know, a kind of reminder of why we're doing this. Um, anyway, just a thought. I know there's a lot to pull together, but I like the, the, small town community feel of it. And I hate Tony's, Tony's not here, so I can't give her this um, assignment, but I am gonna ask, you know, we're, we're, we don't have those contacts, maybe Keegan and, and um, Josh too, but is that something that you could pull together or invite Marcy, look at her Marcy, waving. Marcy, waving her hand. <laughs> <laughs> so Monica in the last meeting suggested Jan Kuisenberg from the library. Mm -hmm. If you want young people to gather here and help you with this, he's got an army of people. She gave you his card at the last meeting. His name is Jan Wiesenberg. You want the young people to come? They will volunteer day and night. Yeah. Uh, my, I'm my, happy to make that call. I'm happy to call. Okay. Whatever you think. Yeah, but we also we're going to cue him up as well for um for listening and listening. learning too, Marcy. Yeah. Oh, so if you're already right. calling him, then I'll let you go. I'll let you do both. Well, we aren't we aren't calling him for this event. We're calling him for listening and learning. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, Marcy, go so ahead. Did if you, you want me to call him, I will. I don't but, know. So that oh, would be nice if you can. He's, he is the best dad in the whole town. He he's the best dad. He runs the team situation at the library. He teaches them all how to be cartoonists. He is a man that wears 14,000 hats and never complains. His wife, Joya, is a joy. So if you want people, young people to show up and help you, reach out to him. Judy Poe, who's the director of the library, will help you. Like She'll do it on their time. So I, I love this idea. Here we go. This is beyond the event. I love this idea of a few younger people holding signs for lots of reasons, but I feel like this youth discussion is much larger than this event. And so I feel like whether that's, I feel like we need to organize an event surrounding youth in the future so and in person. So what's happening here right now is there are people moving in and living in tents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and waving signs and that upsets everyone mm -hmm. and we try to help homeless people the best we can there's a woman in cottonwood named angie lozano who hold it down for homeless people but so standing out in the street and blasting signs at people right now it feels offensive it really does. There's a lot of people that stand in the streets and they hold out their signs and they yell in your faces and they really have no idea what they're doing. But if we could do it in an enthusiastic and pos positive way, I'm not trying to like not acknowledge that there's bad things in the world. We all know that there are bad things in the world right now. But if we could just have people holding signs in a good way in a positive way you know we're all working on the bad things in the background but we don't stand out on 89a and pound our chest about it and tell everybody about all the bad stuff we destroyed today right and this gets back to um john your comment at the very very beginning of this so we're going to continue you know this is an event where we we're trying to do our best for it to be interactive and also people hopefully will be inspired by the speakers. I think it's our job to just be humble and friendly and engaging. And then it's, it's the responsibility of the city and us to continue engaging people, you know? And so, you know, I don't know how best yet to handle the frustrations um, but I think acknowledging that they're there and that we'll do our best to do so is the best that we could do at this point in time. Marcy, your hand is still up. Do you want, do you have anything else to say? No, sorry All about right. that. I just no got excited. It's <laughs> okay. That's okay. So let's close this loop. Um, I guess I'd appreciate other people's thoughts on it as well. Linda was proposing that we had some young people come and kind of orchestrate the night in terms of start here. And Josh, I think we need to follow up on, this is kind of overwhelming, but I'm already envisioning a stack up at the first station potentially. So let's talk about how to reorganize that potentially, whether that means there's two of them and then, because we would really like people to look at that one first, but if they all start there no one's moving on to the next ones and that we do want them to learn about that. So I think if it's not too much to ask, I think we need, two of those stations, potentially one on each side, and then we move back around. John. Um, Abbott and Costello used to have a phrase that they would never have a performance that they knew they couldn't top. So what we know is we have many different community meetings in the future. We've got a lot of stuff in this gig right now. So we always have good ideas. But let's not try to do everything. Let's get through this. You've got a good organization. We just need the graphics to feel powerful. And then the next time we can, um, you know, bring on the kids or bring on the, um, you know, X, Y, Z. Invite in the homeless. Um, and, you know, there's just a whole lot of other things to do after this meeting. Yeah. And maybe we'll get to a point, John, we've had a few workshops where the humor 
we've been able to connect with folks about the humor and we've been able, it's really wonderful because the, the group really went with it, but we've had many work, many a workshop where the sign was just the curmudgeons table and people loved it. They loved to just go and be grumpy in the presence of one another and come uh, I'll, I'll host that table. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that idea. We people have, we have people don't understand. Times. People don't understand the resources we have here in John and Ernie and Rick and, <laughs> you know, Linda and, you know, I'm just in the middle. Like I'm in the middle. We have Brian Fultz. I mean, people... I just have to slow down and speak slowly and pass the information along. And if you want kids to show up, the teachers at either Red Rock High School or Sedona Charter School will have kids for you. We have really awesome teachers here that are living on a prayer. Yeah. Thank God Linda is building housing for them in Big Park. Thank God someone is finally taking care of that. Our teachers are beyond ridiculously good. Monica suggested Bob Lynch last, last month, two weeks ago. Bob is ready to go. Bob and his wife, Terry, started the Sedona Charter School. And thank goodness it's here as an asset. So just oh, wow. send out the bat call. I, I'm not yeah. good at, I'm trying to keep my job in line. I'm trying to keep my daughter in line. I'm trying to keep everything going. You send me the back call and I will put it out and either they're going to get back Let's, to where they want. Yeah. <laughs> Let's organize that back call surrounding the community, the community section of what the plan will be. You know, let's, let's, let's do that. And let's spend more time. Um, I think, I, I don't know if, if having kids holding sign is going to make a big, huge difference. Um, I think it's a great idea if someone's willing to reach out, have them come, but I don't know that we certainly can't spend a lot of time on that. So we're going to leave it up to you, Linda. If you want to make those calls and have four or five kids show up with handmade signs, fantastic. Hopefully they can come with their parents. We'll give them a job. All right. Um, it's 440. Go ahead, Ernie. I was just going to say, and you know that Brian Fulce's wife is the director of, of the Sedona Charter School. So, you know, that's not a hard call. Great. Perfect. Um, we, when is our next meeting? Do we have an in-person the week after this? No? September 21st. You know? So it's not, okay. Um, we don't have an official meeting between now and the event. No, we don't have a meeting, but my question was, would you all support another virtual work session? I don't know if we can even do it. So we need to look on our calendars, but I, I don't wanna wait two weeks to debrief and do next steps mm. at all. So um, can we take a look at our calendars and see if we can not have a three to five, um, yeah. not I, next Wednesday, cause that's the event, but the following Wednesday. Can I please make a request that when you guys send out stuff for the events that just send an outlook appointment or a, a calendly appointment, like something or add event to calendar. Like if it's not in my calendar, I don't do it. So I read all the emails, but, and I'm not trying to be a prima donna, but then I have to put it in my calendar and there's 12,000 other things. So if you guys could just send out an outlook appointment, a calendly, a something where I just save it to my calendar and it's there. I will be there with bells on. Sure. So September, got it. September 14th at three o'clock. Can we do a virtual work session, which will be heavy on the debrief of the event and moving forward with listening and learning, queuing up listening and learning? Yeah. Okay. okay for me. Invite forthcoming to the calendar. Which, which puts us at an in-person meeting on the 21st. Great. Okay, um, I'm exhausted. It's been a day for me too. <laughs> this is a lot to get through. Um, JT, thanks for joining us. I think you are um, 
you're a counselor, but also the public in this case today. <laughs> Do you have any questions or comments for the group? And I, I would say let's end a few minutes early. Nobody hates that. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, I'm just uh, enjoying watching you do everything and I, I think you're you're really doing a terrific job and i'm really looking forward to to being there and experiencing it so yeah. nice thank you and mary i have been laying awake thinking about the music part and just hoping we could do that but i'm really looking forward to the community whatever the community meeting is going to be you know where we have the kids and the youth discussions and there's music over there and really continuing to solidify the celebration of Sedona and what people want for family activities. I think we could do a really, really fun event in person surrounding that, um, that section, arts, arts in the community. So be thinking about which band you want. <laughs> I, I would say, you know, hats off to you all. Uh, it, you have done a lot of work and I think it's amazing and it's going to be good. And I'm not the least bit upset about the music. I'm, it might be helpful for the, the teams for, you know, the different tables to converse before the event. Um, I would feel it better about that, John. And you can be the curmudgeon. We can decide our role. <laughs> and, you know, anyway, I, hats off to you. Thank you very much. You good. bet. So feel free to reach out to one another. You have each other's contact information um, to organize that. We will get out the electronic instructions and the facilitator agenda as soon as possible. Um, have a wonderful, I almost always say Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend. Um, and we'll see you next week. Show up and at three. Spread the word. Else. Spread the word. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. You're doing Thank an amazing you. job. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye, y'all. Bye. Stop recording, Carrie.